repeat what we have done in the last lecture. So the adiabatic evolution what we have considered is, so if you assume a given Hamiltonian having certain eigenstates, really a particle exists in a given eigenstate, okay, uh, for certain Hamiltonian and you turn on interaction slowly, clear? Uh, the state will evolve into an another state. That state is also the eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, the pa parent Hamiltonian, okay? And the eigen, the quantum numbers will not change, okay? Suppose if you start with, let's say, you start with some state N, like this thing. So N0 is the eigenstate of some Hamiltonian H0 and you turn on perturbation adiabatically, you will end up with some state M. Okay? You got it? Let's let me take this as the instantaneous eigenstates of this Hamiltonian. Clear? Okay. So I'll, let me put this in this fashion instead of H0. Okay, time dependent part. So this is the crux of the adiabatic. <laughs> <laughs> let's quantify it. <laughs> How we quantify it? So we assume it there exists an intrinsic uh, energy scale in a given system. Okay, so that energy scale will be given by let's say the minimum of, of the energy level. Let's say the gap between let's say you are having some system. These are the energy levels. Let's call the minimum of these. Okay, so the energy spacing between let's say two levels. Let's call that as omega. So this will specify you the intrinsic energy scale on which uh, the system will evolve, clear? Okay, and there will be an energy scale governed by the time dependence. Uh, there will be a time scale coming from the <coughs> time dependence of this Hamiltonian, clear? Okay, so the interplay between these two scales will give me the condition for the adiabatic evolution. In other words, let's say, let's say you are having omega as the energy scale of the system, clear? Okay, and you are having, let's say, the energy scale that is given by this thing. So, this partial h by partial t by h of t. Clear? So, this is the energy scale uh, that is given by the <coughs> time, variation. <coughs> time variation of this Hamiltonian. Clear? Because you are doing the time dependent phenomenon. Clear? Okay, so this adiabatic evolution means if this quantity is smaller than. Got it? In other words, let me say, so what this statement means, it means Hamiltonian should not change appreciably. Okay. During a correct For this condition to hold, so this should not vary appreciably. Okay, so this is simply the time variation. Now look at this thing. So what is the dimensionality of this object? Thing? What is the dimensionality? It's, these are actually the time scales, is it? Okay, so what is the dimension of this thing? So by energy uncertain principle, you'll get a time scale here. Will it? Will you get a time scale? Okay, so you will be having one time scale, let's call that time scale as, okay? So this is the time scale, okay? Intrinsic time scale on which the system evolves, eh? naturally, eh? And there will be a time scale governed by that. So let's call that time scale as inverse of this very object. Okay? So inverse of this thing. So what is now the adiabatic approximation? So this t is greater than omega in terms of yes. Omega greater than tau. Yes, it is greater than. So you are evolving over a la larger time scale than this tau. Got it? So much one. So that you are not able to resolve uh, the time scale on which the system evolves. Got it? 
So much on? Yes. So that is actually the adiabatic evolution. Huh? So have you got this very point in terms of the time scales? Yes, huh? So <coughs> so t is a time scale that is given by the time that comes through the time dependence of this very Hamiltonian, okay? Or the changes that occur in the Hamiltonian, okay? And the tau is a time scale on which the system itself evolves. Let's say there are no time dependent phenomena and so on. So system will evolve by itself. Huh? So let's say a particle goes from one state to the another mm -hmm. state, the intrinsic time scale on which it goes, it is tau. <coughs> Clear? But if you evolve the system on a time scale which is larger than tau, so that means you will not be able to resolve that time scale. Gillian? Mm -hmm. In that time domain, you will see essentially the system is not changing. Got it? Okay? So let's do, last time I have told you, so the calculation what we have done in the diabetic approximation, there was actually an error. Okay? Because we considered only one state out of a given basis. Okay? And uh, that equation does not hold if I take the entire basis. Huh? So I have taken, if you remember, there was a kind of term that C dot, let's say N of T and this N of T, if you remember. And I have chosen, okay, is equal to something, okay? And I have chosen only one of the states, let's say N of T, okay, out of, a, out of this basis that when overlapped with this thing gave me one is it mm -hmm. so you are having other states as well that does not necessarily guarantee this kind of uh, condition mm -hmm. clear so that can be zero as well so it is essentially a vector equation or you can think it as a matrix equation eh? mm -hmm. okay so this i commented last time so now let's do the systematic calculation eh, of this kind of evolution <coughs> okay so let's take the family of the instantaneous eigenstates. Okay, so let's consider that family as phi n. Huh? Okay, so what I mean by that? So you are having this h of t, okay, acting on this phi n of t. So this is simply e n of t. So let's call, so let's order these eigenstates in terms of the energies or you can order these energies. Let me write some, okay, E1 of t, okay, so that is less than E2 of t. So I am simply ordering them. Huh? So you order this kind of set in terms of their energies. Huh? Got it? Such that you can say phi1 is the lowest a state having the lowest energy, phi2 is a state having the next higher energy, clear? and so on. Okay, it is not necessary, but let's order them in this way. <coughs> okay. So now since we since we know these do not form the solutions of the time dependent Schrodinger equation. Because we are dealing with the time dependent phenomena, we have to solve the time dependent Schrodinger equation. Clear? Okay, so let's call the solution psi of t to be okay. So let's call this psi of t as the solution of the Schrodinger equation. Okay? Like this. So I can explain now this solution in terms of this basis. Can I do that? Okay. So therefore I can write this psi of t. So simply the basis that okay. So the extension of an arbitrary function in terms of the basis. So I can write this as c n of t. Okay. So now let's substitute it back there. So what you will get? So let's use this. Okay. So CN, we have to figure out what CNT is. Okay. So last time we have figured. Okay. So if you remember the last time expression, I had not written the sum. It is, everything is okay. Not normal now. Eh? Okay. Whatever we have done in the last lecture, there was no sum. Then we have taken only one of the wave. Eh? Only one of the state vectors. Here we are taking all the state vectors. Okay? Simply the linear proportion of all these various states. Okay. So let's substitute it back here. What you will get? So you will get IH term. Summation of n. There is a differentiation with respect to time. So it will be simply C and dot T. 
okay this phi n of t okay plus c n of t then the differentiation of this part phi dot n of t okay so then you are having h of t okay it is acting on the summation of n c n of t phi n of t so this i can write as since h will act on this phi feel it so phi are the instantaneous eigenstates of this edge so you will get simply so c n of t okay c n of t phi n of t <coughs> so now this equation holds for any n <coughs> so what you will get so this implies i h cross okay c dot n of t phi n of t okay am i doing correction huh? is everything okay or is there any problem okay so let's multiply on left multiply on left by let's say this phi here so why phi k belongs to this set huh? okay so these are the instantaneous eigenstates now let's do that so it implies i h cross summation of n okay so you will be having c dot n of t then phi k t okay then phi n of t okay Got it? Okay. Then the C n of t, then you are having phi k of t, phi dot n of t. Okay. So that's equal to summation of n C n t, C n t, phi k of t. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this very term since uh, the basis I have chosen to be orthonormal. So these instantaneous eigenstates, if they are not orthonormal, you can make them by Graham Smith orthonormalization okay. procedure. Okay? Yes, sir. So what this object is? So it is delta k. Okay. So what about this thing? This again. Okay. So what you are having? So I got I h cross c dot k of t, okay, because when you sum over n, n will be replaced by k, okay, then you are having the another term, I h cross summation over n, okay, c n t, then you are having this phi k t, okay, phi dot n t, okay, so that's equal to then you have hang simply C K of T T K of T. Fill <coughs> it. <coughs> yeah. So you sum over M and you will be replaced by K. Got it? So now let what what I will do here. So let me take since this N goes from all the terms, huh? all the states available in the base set. Fill it. So this N can be equal to K as well. So I will take that term out. Okay. So what I will do. So I'll put it like this thing, I h cross c dot k t. Okay, so let me bring that term c k t t k t on this side. So that is minus I h cross. So this I can put <coughs> this way. Okay, so c k t. Okay, then you are having phi k t. So let me take n is equal to k term. Huh? So here I am taking n equal to k term. So that is this term. So that is phi dot k t. Clear? So then there is a term where n is not equal to k. So you are having c and t. Okay. Phi k t. Okay. Phi dot. Got it? So which implies you can just rearrange the terms. So it is simply. So can you rearrange the terms? So it is i h cross c dot k t, okay, 
is equal to C <coughs> T is common, then you are in E T T, then you are in this minus, okay, I H plus phi T T, okay, phi dot T T. <coughs> summation n not equal to k c n t phi t t okay phi dot n okay so what i will do i will take this i stress on this okay so let's keep it let's call this as equation one now what i will do i will just evaluate this very term eh? i will try to figure out what this term is everybody has followed it yes sir Okay, can anybody guess uh, about this thing? How to evaluate this very term? So let's do it. <coughs> can anybody? <coughs> Let me take this very equation. H of t, phi n of t. So how much is that? E n of t, okay, phi n of t. Clear? So now differentiate it. Just differentiate it with respect to time, what it will be? So it will be simply h dot t, okay, phi and t plus h of t phi dot m t, clear? So what you are having? E n dot t, then phi and t plus e n t, okay, phi dot Everybody? Okay, so what I will do, I will multiply on left by this phi k. So for k not equal to n. So I will take phi k for which k is not equal to n. Okay, so that means n term is not there. Huh? So that I, I need to get this very term. Huh? Okay, so for n, so multiply on left by this phi k up, okay, so let's multiply, so which implies therefore, you are having this phi k t, h dot t, phi n t, clear, okay, then you are having this thing, okay, phi k t, h of t, phi dot n t, so that's equal to T dot N T, so you are having this phi K T, phi N T, plus E N T, okay, phi K T, okay, phi dot N Got it? Okay, so now let's look at this very term. So since K is not equal to N, that means they are orthogonal, okay? Right? So this term is equal to zero. Okay. So now what about this very term? So now let's look at this very term. Since phi k is an instantaneous eigenstate of H, clear? H is a Hermitian operator. Eh? Okay. So this will act on this side. So what it gives me? So this term will give me simply e k of t. Okay. Phi k t and phi dot and clear? Got it? Okay. So now let's take this term on the left hand side, okay, okay, or right hand side, so which implies this phi k t h dot, okay, phi n t, so that's equal to this e n t minus e k t, okay, like this, eh? then you are having this phi k t phi dot got it so now what you have got phi k and this phi k phi dot is it so that is this very term you have got <coughs> okay so what you are having therefore this phi k t phi dot and t so that's equal to phi k t okay phi dot n t 
by E N T minus E T. Clear? Yes, yes, sorry, sir. So it is h dot, huh? h dot t phi and <coughs> so this one, huh? divided by that energy difference is it? Clear? So now let's substitute it here. Okay, so which one of the using in equation one? So what you will get? So you will get i h cross t dot t t less equal to t t t t t minus i h cross phi t t okay and then you are hang phi dot t t then you are hang the summation n is not equal to k c and t so you are hang it says phi k t h dot of t phi and t divided by t n of t minus t here. So now what is the adiabatic approximation? So this gives, okay, so forget about all these terms. So this term gives you the transition from uh, n to other k states where k, n is not equal to k. Clear? So what is the adiabatic approximation? If you make a transition, okay, uh, sorry. If you evolve a system adiabatically, then in the, in the so it uh, the transition to higher states, is all other same. states is suppressed. Yes, sir. Is it true? Yes, sir. So essentially, this system stays in that very state. Clear? Yes, so if you st start with n, so it will stay in n if you are evolving adiabatically. Clear? So the uh, the quantification uh, I have done just uh, before. So this is simply that uh, partial height by partial t is it divided by the energy clear? So under adiabatic approximation, this term is what? This is very small. So much one? We can ignore this very term under adiabatic approximation. Okay. Okay. So this is very important thing. Huh? This is simply the we are using the definition of what? Adiabatic adiabatic condition. Clear? Got it? So if I ignore this thing, what I get? So we have simply this equation. <coughs> so therefore we get we are under adiabatic evolution. So this C dot T T that's equal to okay. So you 1 by, okay, 1 by i a cross, okay, then you are having this e k t minus i h cross phi k t, okay, phi dot k t, okay. So this is simply, what is the solution? This is the first order differential equation, simple differential equation. So the solution is the exponential, okay? Mm -hmm. So, You should clear, okay, here is one important thing, you should clearly understand what adiabatic approximation means, sir. Eh? Okay, so when you are starting from, let's say, n, you go to n of t, clear? So this, <coughs> n of t is related to, the, this is actually n with a phase factor. Okay, so you can write this some phase factor, let's say, e raised for i, some chi, times n. So why this is, clear? So it will simply occur a geometric or a time dependent phase clear, but this n will remain as such. Yeah. Got it? So much, you know? So that's why these terms are very suppressed. Eh? So there is no uh, uh, transition from one n state to other k states clear. So those are highly suppressed under adiabatic evolution. Or in other words, the magnitude of this very term is very small. Eh? So you should understand this one. Okay. So now you can see here. So let's solve it. What you will get? So you'll get this ck of t that's equal to 
CK at zero, E raised power uh, this thing. Okay, so exponential of one by I stars from zero to T. Let's put T T prime. Then you are having this E K T prime. Okay, then minus I stars. Okay, phi K T prime. Okay, phi dot K T prime. Clear? So is this the same thing? So C K T is actually up to this very phase. If you remember last time we had that n. Okay, so we wrote n of t in terms of n. Clear? But multiplied by this kind of phase. Okay. So what this is equal to? So it is C K of zero e raised for i theta of t, what we call as a dynamical a dynamical phase factor. Okay, so dynamical phase factor is okay, so let me define, and then there is another phase factor. So that what was the notation we are used? Theta. Huh? Theta. theta of t for dynamical. We have used a gamma, huh? so let's write it as theta k. So i gamma k. Okay, k because uh, we are taking k state. Huh? Got it? So what is our theta k t? So it, it is simply <coughs> one by h cross zero to t d t prime e k t prime. So this is our dynamical phase. <coughs> okay, then you are having this gamma k t. Okay, so that's how much equal to? So minus i integral <coughs> because okay, so just tell me. So it is plus n. So zero to t d t prime. Okay. So phi k t prime and phi dot t. Clear? So this we call as the Berry phase or the geometrical phase. Got it? So this was okay. So this we already we have already done this kind of calculation in the last lecture. Okay. So any question till now? So let's try to figure out what is the connection of this adiabatic uh, uh, condition with the time independent perturbation. Clear? So let's put it this way. Suppose if you are having the time independent perturbation, you can slowly turn on the <coughs> I mean perturbation. Okay. You slowly turn it on and switch it off. Okay. Have you? Um, so this is there. <coughs> <laughs> there is a uh, this is a very nice problem. Uh, uh, the behavior of the metals is it? So let's uh, uh, take for example metals. Okay. So you see in metals electrons are free, is it? So you don't encounter any kind of electron electron repulsion. Essentially, let's take let me take the copper wire. Clear? So electrons are free, and you don't see there is any kind of repulsion. Okay. And there is some uniform background you can think against that background. The part these electrons are moving. Clear? So why it is so? So why these electrons do not feel any kind of uh, this repulsion? So this is uh, this uh, this is a very profound problem. So it was actually uh, resolved. This kind of problem was resolved by Lando. Okay. Uh, so he gave the idea of this kind of adiabatic evolution of a given state. Okay, so what happens actually? <coughs> these electrons are not simply bare electrons. That means the air, the electrons what you know. Huh? So they are actually clothed by, let's say, uh, this uh, phonons due to Lex potential. Okay. So there are some sort of what we call the effective electrons. We call them as the quasi particles. Eh? Okay. So quasi particles exist within the near, within the uh, I mean this uh, Fermi surface. Okay. So near the Fermi surface. Okay. Where there the the interactions are very negligible. You can think this quasi particle as something. You are having a particle within the Fermi surface, and you once you turn on the interaction adiabatically. Okay. Slowly. Okay. So this particle particle goes in the vicinity of the Fermi surface. Okay, outside. Eh? Got it. And it behaves as a free particle as such. Eh? Those particles. Okay. You, 
I'm giving you a rough idea. Those are the quasi particles, and these particles are moving in this kind of metals. Okay, so I have not introduced any kind of time dependent phenomena there, is it? Okay, so such problems can be done within the realm of what? Uh, adiabatic perturbation theory or simply the time uh, independent perturbation theory. So that means in such kind of situation, there must exist actually the relation between the time independent perturbation and adiabatic, sorry, time dependent perturbation and the time independent perturbation. They, uh, they are related only in the adiabatic limit. So the results from both the perturbations are same when you are in the adiabatic limit. Clear? Got it? So the dynamics is not involved there. Eh? So let's try to figure out that. So let's uh, say, <coughs> suppose you start from minus infinity. Minus infinity is simply a mathematical symbol here. Eh? That is far away from the interaction. Okay? So let's say you are uh, evolving your system from minus infinity to some, let's say, t equal to 0. Eh? So this is a time axis. Okay, I put t equal to 0. That means I am going to 0 minus. Eh? Okay, so in the neighborhood of this zero, so my system, let's say it evolves by the Hamiltonian H0. Clear? Okay, so let's say, so it is essentially free. And I turn on my interaction adiabatically at t equal to zero. Got it? So much or let me turn on the interaction at t equal to zero. Let me give a time dependence to the interaction, okay, to this Hamiltonian at t equal to zero. Got it? Such that the total Hamiltonian, I can write, let's say, h of t as some h0 plus, let me write it in this fashion, t by tau, okay, some, <coughs> let me write t here, yeah? okay, <coughs> so where t is less than 0 <coughs> minus infinity and tau is greater than 0. So tau I am defining as a time scale, intrinsic time scale on which I am evolving the system, Feel it? on which the, the system evolves by itself. Okay, so I have here now two time scales defined by this t and defined by this tau. Okay, so now look here. So if I take this tau tends to infinity, let's say tau is very large. Got it? So what happens to this very exponential? So it is 1. Okay, so what you get it actually? So the time independent phenomenon. Got it? Okay, if this tau is shorter than this t, <coughs> We are getting uh, some different, okay, we are getting a time dependent phenomenon, okay? Got it? So, from this kind of uh, uh, Hamiltonian, you should now understand if I now apply the time dependent perturbation, let's say, and take tau tends to infinity, what I should get? First of all, okay, so I should get actually the time independent results. Got it? Okay, so let's try to calculate it, okay? So everybody followed the problem? So what is the problem we are looking at? Okay, so let's do it. So let me write first. So we are having first order correction. So the transition from <coughs> <coughs> amplitude for a system moving from let's say it's minus i by extra 0 to t dt prime e raised for i omega m n t prime. So then v m n so this gives us the transition amplitude, okay, first order correction to the transition amplitude for a system moving from the state n to state yeah. m, or sorry, state m to state n, got it? So this is a correction to the state uh, n, got it? Okay, so now wh where we are starting from? Minus infinity. T we are looking from where? Minus infinity. So for this kind of problem, therefore, so I can write this C n 1 of t. So I will write it as minus i by h star. This minus in sorry. Because I have to look at 0. Okay. How the system evolves from minus infinity to 0. At t equal to 0, I am applying the perturbation. Feel it? Got it? Okay. So it is dt prime. Okay. E raised for i omega 
M N P prime. Then what is this V M N? <laughs> so it is simply e raised power p by tau. Then you are having this V M N. Got it? Okay. So if you if anybody has problem, so it is something M. This V of p. Clear? So V of p is that e raised power p by tau times p. So this will come out. So what this is? So it is minus i by h cross. So uh, you can write it as v m n. So then you are having minus infinity to zero d t prime. Okay. So this I can put as like this thing. So it is t prime huh? because t prime is a dummy variable. Huh? So it is i omega m n. Okay. Plus one by tau into this t. Clear? Got it? Okay, so now what is the integration? So it is minus i v m m by h cross. So what is the integration? One divided by i omega m n plus one by tau. Clear? So this is the integration. Okay. So now let's take tau tends to infinity. So let me write c n one zero, okay, and tau tends to infinity, okay. So that's equal to so minus i by h cross v m n is what m v m by i omega <coughs> m n. How much is that? So i and i goes. So it is i h cross. So there should be h cross as well, right? I, no, no, no. So, what is this h cross sine of omega? So, it is simply m v n h cross sine of omega. That is simply e m. So, since these are actually the e m minus e n, so e m is actually the unperturbed energy. Clear? Okay. So, that's why I will put this. Here. Got it? Now, what this correction is? It is no. It is the first order correction to the wave function. Clear? Got it? So if you remember, so you started with some state n, so then you are having the, uh, this thing plus, okay, n1. Lambda times n1. Feel it? So what is this n1? n0 plus. <coughs> Anybody? <coughs> n is not equal to n. is not equal to n. H1 M divided by E N naught minus E M naught then clear? So this is the result. First order correction to the wave function. So that means these will simply represent me the coefficients to the first order correction. Got it? Okay. So what you got? What you got? So you have got extra the first order correction. So that means in the <laughs> at diabetic limit, so this will give you simply the coefficient to the first order correction to the wave function. In other words, you can calculate now the first order correction to the energy as well. How so much? So this finishes the adiabatic uh, evolution. Okay. So now let's take <coughs> How much time is remaining? 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so we'll be done. No, we are uh, finishing it today. Hmm? Okay. So let's take what we call the sudden approximation. Huh? Uh, okay, I will use sudden perturbation. Huh? Okay, because I will not be developing any kind of formalism for this problem. Eh? We will be uh, understanding this from an example. Okay? Okay, sudden, look, in the it is actually the opposite to the adiabatic. Okay, in the adiabatic, you are turning on the perturbation slowly. But in case of the sudden approximation, you are turning on the perturbation abruptly. Okay? Violently. Okay? 
Got it? You are suddenly turning on like this thing. Let's say you are having a particle in box of length A in one dimension. At certain time, you abruptly explode it uh, to the other uh, length. Let's say L equal to 10 A. Got it? Yes, sir. So you cannot apply here any kind of approximation what we have developed here. Got it? So let's say at t equal to 0, you have, suppose you have a particle in a box. Okay? So it is having length A. Let's say L equal to 0 to A. It's a asymmetric box. Huh? So now you expand it. Okay? Uh, at t equal, let's say at certain time, huh? to a new length. Abruptly, you do it. Huh? Got it? So the system is, you are having now a new system. Okay, so the question is what you can ask, what is the probability, let's say you are, the particle was in the ground state and now you are having the ground state for the another box as well and you will ask a question, what is the transition probability that a particle can go, uh, is found in the ground state of the new well, huh? what you have, okay, what you have got by suddenly changing the walls of the well, clear? So these type of questions you can always ask. In this case, look here. Suppose, uh, okay, so let me uh, draw it. So you are having a box here. At t, let's say at t equal to 0. So you got a new box. Huh? So you are having the two systems now here. Although the dynamics, let's say, the what are the wave functions here? So it's like this thing. Okay, sine of n pi by a x okay so you are having here the same kind of wave function but this l will be changing clear got my point so you will be having this form will be the same thing okay and these parameters will change the parameters will be now instead of the length l so you will be having some different kind of let's say 2l 3l whatsoever okay so the system is same okay only the perturbation is applying where at a given point Okay, and at a given point, let's say if there are no discontinued discontinuities in the potential, then you can be having these wave functions can be continuous. But if in the potential, the perturbation, if that is uh, there are uh, let's say singularities, then uh, the wave function becomes what? Uh, I mean, uh, discontinuous. Okay, so let me give an example. Let's say you are having a one wall of the bell. Let's say x equal to a, so it's equal to plus infinity. Yeah? So the potential goes up. Huh? So what is the wave function outside? Let's say. So here you are having psi. Here it is equal to what? Zero. 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 Because the potential at this very point, infinite. it's infinite. Okay. So by the property of the Schrodinger equation, then the wave function at this in this region it has to be discontinuous. Clear? If it would have been the finite, let's say if it is not infinity, if it is simply the discontinuous, then it is what? Uh, it is simply the continuous across this very boundary. Clear? So these are the conditions what you need to utilize when you do a given sudden approximation problem. Clear? Got it? Yes, we'll be, okay, so these are uh, this is a trivial problem. I will not be doing that. We'll be doing some different, okay? So a two-level system problem, okay? Because that is a very robust problem, okay? So you'll learn many things from that very problem. Let's say you are having a two-level system. <coughs> Okay, so let's consider a two-level system with suppose energy Ea. Let's say these are the two states. Okay. Got it? So this is simply okay, so one level is having energy Ea, another level is having what? So this is your two-level system. Let's say A, Ea, A B. Okay. Got it? So let me define the frequency. So it is some EB minus EA divided by H. Let's define this. Huh? So that's the difference. So let me apply now the perturbation. Huh? So let me apply this P of P as like this thing. Some since this is a two by two matrix, so I'll apply let's say zero alpha some alpha star zero. It's a very violent uh, perturbation. It's a sudden, is it? Yeah. Because delta t it is non-zero, only at t equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So that means at t equal to zero, you are suddenly disturbing the system. Okay? So you can call this as V delta t. 
Clear? So it is something at t equal to 0. Okay. So let's say at t equal to 0. So you are applying the perturbation. So this is. Okay. Now what is. Okay. So, so we need to ask a question. <coughs> Suppose at t equal to minus infinity. Okay. So your uh, system is in the eigenstate A. Okay. Let's say you you start with your system in the eigenstate A. What is the probability that you can uh, add once you apply the perturbation? What is the probability it is found to be in state B? Clear? So how to work out this kind of problem? We have done actually the formulas of the perturbation. Clear? We have to be very careful once we are treating this kind of uh, delta function. Okay. Okay. <coughs> have you got the problem? Okay. So now how to deal with this problem? Let's say this is minus infinity. Uh, this is let's say t equal to okay. Zero minus, this is zero plus, and this is plus infinity. Suppose I am saying my system is at t equal to minus infinity it is in the state a clear yes, so it is it equivalent to saying that at t equal to 0 yes, minus it is still in the same state yes, because there is no perturbation even at t equal to 0 minus yes, okay here the system evolves okay till this very point let's say minus infinity to 0 minus okay so your system okay the evolution is governed by this h naught Okay, and for H naught, I am saying my system is where in the state A. Okay, so that means at t equal to zero minus, let's say, okay, or uh, in this very uh, region. So let me write that. Uh, let me put. I mean, the, my notation. Okay, let me write th therefore the psi of e, the solution to the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. It will be okay. This A. And you have to put the yeah. exponential factor uh, dealing the okay, giving the energy of the particle or the energy of the state. So, is this the state up to this? Okay, yeah. okay, up to zero minus. Clear? In this very range, your state is this thing. Clear? Okay, so now what I need to figure out? So, uh, the question we have to deal with, we have to look at what is the probability for a system to be in the state B. Clear? Okay, since at t equal to 0, I am applying the perturbation, clear? Okay, so now if I have to figure the state here, so what will be the state here? So I Okay, so let, let me figure out the state at t equal to plus infinity. So that is same as saying what you need, you have to figure out what is the state at 0 plus, t equal to 0 plus. Got it? So what would be that state? That state would be simply as a linear combination of these two states. Got it? Okay. So that okay. So in our problem, we have figured out what is the state at t equal to zero minus, and at t equal to zero plus. So it is equally saying any time, anywhere here. Clear? So that will be the same thing. So that will be simply the linear superposition of these two states. Okay. So therefore, at t equal to zero plus, so that is same as t equal to plus infinity. Okay. I should put like this thing t equal to plus infinity that is same as say t equal to 0 plus so what is the state so let me write only the state let me not give the time evolution for the timing what will be the state so let's say that will be at t equal to 0 plus so that will be simply as let's say a linear combination of these two states so let me put some time dependence as well okay so let's put Let's not put time depend for the time. Okay. So because uh, uh, why? Because this potential will create actually the transition between <laughs> these two levels. Eh? It is off diagonal. Eh? Got it? If it would have been diagonal, then there would be no transition at all. Eh? Okay. You have so much. So which which implies so at any time at t so which is actually greater than this zero plus for any time. Eh? On that very region, I can write it as a e raised for i e a t by h plus a plus b e raised for minus b b 
the edge is this how you deal with it because in that region you don't have any kind of time dependence i i mean you don't have any kind of potential eh? you don't have any perturbation the system is evolved only with by h not again eh? okay and these are simply like what yeah. stationary states of this h not got it the perturbation only exists here eh? okay <laughs> now what is the probability that this state is found in the <coughs> in d it's simply mod of b square so what are unknown in our problem here a and b so that means we need to figure out a and b okay so samashema now look here what is the probability so probability that state will be figured out let's say from a to b at time t so what it will be so you need to take the overlap of this thing let's say b psi of t okay mod this thing so that will be simply as mod of b square that's actually a time dependent time independent term eh? because b is not time dependent eh? why the reason b you don't have any kind of perturbation here eh? nor here nor here it is only here so the coefficients here will not evolve with respect to time eh? yes sir so yes, sir got it okay so we need to then our problem is simply reduce it in figuring out this a and b let's try to figure out these uh, quickly yeah? okay so <coughs> let's start our calculation so we start with this series Okay, an arbitrary state. That is the solution of the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Here I have put actually the time dependence because we are now giving the complete Hamiltonian. Eh? When I am taking the complete Hamiltonian, that means uh, I have to figure out what is the solution of the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Let's call that solution to be psi of t, and I need to figure out what is the C A C B. Okay, how they evolve in time. Okay, what are the initial conditions? So what are the initial conditions? So C A at t equal to 0 minus. That means on the left of this very potential. Okay, so what is that? Because okay, at t equal to 0 minus, you are having only this state A. Because I am starting my system only in the state A. I am not saying it is in the state B. Huh? So this is okay. You can equally say my state is in the state B. My system is in the state B. Clear? Okay, so then you can write this C. Uh, okay, so here I I will put like this. Sorry, it is one. So, because if it is a one, that means your state is where the mm -hmm. uh, system is in the state A and C B T equal to zero minus it is zero. Okay. So this is the, you can choose the other way around. You can choose this equal to zero. This as one, or you can choose the other way. This half and this half. Okay. So such that the sum is equal to unity. Eh? Got it? So much on. Not a so much. Okay, mod square. So you can not have 1 by root 2. You can choose 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2. So like that the mod square plus this, mod square of this plus mod square of this is equal to 1. Got it? So you can choose any arbitrary combinations. So we will choose this single. Eh? Okay. So now what are the differential equations? Time dependent phenomena when we are doing. So. <coughs> So we can write now uh, these equations C dot A. So these C A's and C B satisfy these equations. These I have already derived and we have figured one problem, uh, Rabi oscillations, uh, if you remember. Okay, so that is equal to E raised for I omega T. Okay, then you are having this V A B T and then C B T, clear? I H cross. C dot B T that's equal to E raised for minus zero T B B T and then C B clear? Got it? Okay. So let's write. So what you are having here, so this implies you are having I H cross C dot A T. Okay, so that's equal to E raised for I omega T. 
So V A D it gives you alpha, then you are hanging this delta T, C B T, then you are hanging this I H cross C dot B T, it's equal to E raised to the minus I omega T. This is simply alpha star and delta T C A T. These are two coupled differential equations. Okay. Now you are what are C A? These are the coefficients of a given wave. Okay, coefficients in a expansion for a wave function. Clear? Got it? So that means uh, they are related to the wave function. Got it? Okay. <coughs> so you are hanging now the region. Okay. So you can think uh, you are okay. So let me put it. F of t delta t. What it gives you? F of, F of zero, zero. Delta t. Clear? So when this equation holds. When this equation is true, so when this f of t is actually a continuous function in a given domain on which this delta function is defined, this f of t should be what? Continuous. continuous. If it is not continuous, then it is not valid equation. Clear? So this is very important condition. Now look here. So you are hanging here. Okay. So you can equal. Forget about these coefficients. You can equally put this delta t. Okay. So you can put this t equal to zero, t equal to zero. Clear? Using this thing, but is it true? So this is not true. Okay, so that's why I have chosen this kind of problem. Okay, so there is a very subtlety in this problem. Okay, so you cannot use this kind of condition here. The reason being, I have told you, when you are having a region where the potential suffers a singularity, then the wave function is always discontinuous. Okay, so that means there arises a discontinu discontinuity in the uh, in that very region, while the potential is defined, delta function is defined at t equal to zero, and in that very region, my wave function is what? Continuous. Discontinuous. Okay, so it is discontinuous here. So that means I can uh, not apply this formula in this very region. Okay. So now the point is how to do it. Okay. So what I will do, I have to regularize this delta function. Okay. In that case, you need to uh, regularize. Uh, Delta okay, so what does that mean? You have to approximate delta function by certain other kind of function because we okay. So uh, delta function you can write by various functions. Let's say by a Lorentzian function, you can write delta function like this thing: a by x square plus a square for a tends to zero. Clear? So this also a delta function. You can write e raised for something. Clear? Okay, so but the point is what kind of approximation I need to do here. Since we are doing a sudden approximation, clear? And this uh, function, okay, or uh, this, um, sorry, this perturbation exists only for a short time. Okay, it does not occur for a very long time, clear? Now, what kind of regularization I need to do for this delta function, okay? So, what I will do, I will choose two limits, minus epsilon and plus epsilon. And approximate this very delta function by a sequence of let's say rectangles of so width let's say this epsilon. Got it? Like this thing. When epsilon tends to zero, okay, so like this thing. Kill it? So much on? So and so on. So how I will do it? <coughs> I will <coughs> regularize it like this thing. Let me introduce this. Okay, so I will put it as one by two epsilon for epsilon less than. Like this thing and zero otherwise. So at the end of the calculation, I will put this epsilon tends to zero. When I put epsilon tends to zero, when I put epsilon tends to zero, I will reach to the t equal to zero point. Clear? Got it? So much more. Now let's substitute this in this thing. So let's use what this delta t what one by two epsilon. Okay. So let me stop here. So I'll show. Tomorrow.